Hey there, I'm currently working on a scripting language, and one of my goals is for it to be, you know, somewhat beginner-friendly. And while there are certainly many aspects to being beginner-friendly, in my opinion, a simple syntax and not requiring semicolons is one of those aspects. So in this video we'll be looking at three approaches languages use to get rid of semicolons, but before we do that we should first understand what problems semicolons even solve. And answering that is fairly straightforward. Semicolons tell the compiler where one statement ends and another one begins. But why can't it figure that out on its own? Usually we just write one statement on each line, so it should be fairly straightforward to figure out where the statements are. Well, most languages, and especially those that use semicolons, actually ignore all white space. So to the compiler the code looks like this. And here clearly we do need semicolons, right? Well, here's a Rust function that adds two numbers and then returns the negative of this sum. And I happen to have forgotten a semicolon up here. But the compiler somehow exactly knows where the semicolon is missing. And that's because after this b, the next token is the return keyword and the return keyword cannot really extend the previous statement, so the compiler knows this is where the statement must end. But since this is Rust, we don't actually need to use the return keyword to return a value from the function. We could have just written it like this. But now the compiler gives us a different error. Now it thinks the semicolon should go here, which is not correct. And the reason this happens is again because the compiler ignores new lines, so it thinks this minus symbol should extend the previous statement to form a subtraction. And I think this might be one of the reasons why the Rust developers chose to use semicolons in the language. Especially because this is not the only place where this happens. It also happens with pointer dereferencing, where it looks like a multiplication to the compiler, and when assigning values to tuples, which looks like a function call to the compiler without the semicolon and the new lines. The problem in all of these cases is that these top two lines are valid statements according to the grammar, but so is their concatenation onto a single line. So if the compiler ignores the new lines, both of these cases always look like the bottom case, and if we actually want the top case, we need to insert the semicolon manually. But there is one language which also ignores all new lines but does not require semicolons, and that language is Lua. And the way Lua does it is by restricting the grammar instead. So the example with the tuples, which looked like a function call to the Rust compiler, is simply not valid in Lua, because Lua does not have any tuples. Instead it has a multi-assignment statement. And while Lua does support optional semicolons, for the addNext function we still need a return keyword, because Lua doesn't have any expression statements. While many other parts of my language are inspired by Lua, I decided to not go with Lua's approach to semicolons because I don't like the idea of restricting the grammar, especially as I'm about to add tuples to the language. But I can't really make a video about a beginner-friendly language without semicolons without mentioning Python. Unlike Lua, Python does not restrict its grammar, but it also doesn't require semicolons. Therefore it has to use whitespace to figure out where the statements are. In general, blocks are defined by indentation and there's one statement on each line. But complex math expressions can be written using parentheses. Now, if beginner friendliness was my number one priority, I would definitely go with this approach, especially because the indentation based syntax is so hard to mess up. But personally, I don't really like the indentation based approach. And now let's finally talk about Go. Go is one of those languages that I haven't yet used practically, but I do keep coming back to the specification for language design problems, and usually I learn something new. And Go's approach to semicolons was no exception. Go is interesting because it doesn't require semicolons, and is also very flexible when it comes to indentation and multi line statements. And the way Go does this is also really interesting, because Go does in fact use semicolons, but the user doesn't have to type them, the compiler inserts them automatically, and it does that using a very simple but powerful rule. The general idea is that, like in Python, there's one statement on each line, therefore the rule states that semicolons are inserted at the end of a line, but to support multiline expressions, it only inserts a semicolon if the last token can actually end an expression, which is not the case for infix operators, opening parentheses, or periods. But there is one minor inconvenience when it comes to this rule, which is that multiline math expressions and chain method calls can't be written with the operators on the left hand side, because the rule only considers the last token on the line, and since that's an identifier here, and a closing parenthesis here, the rule actually mandates that after all of these lines, semicolons are inserted. So for my language, I extended Go's rule with another condition, which basically states that if the token on the next line indicates that the statement isn't done yet, then no semicolon should be inserted. While the rule works for my language, it wouldn't actually work for Go, because the compiler would confuse dereferencing with multiplication, but since my language doesn't have pointers, that's not an issue. And similarly with the addNeg function, my language requires an explicit return keyword, which I prefer anyway, so that's fine. So that's how my language supports complex multiline math expressions with arbitrary indentation and without the need for semicolons.